Let's start with some ways of visualizing velocity fields. Here is a vector field, um, arbitrary vector field that I've made up. Let's just say our velocity vector is 2x, the u component is 2x, and the y component is y. So our velocity vector is 2xi plus yj. I can plot that over a, a mesh going from, say, x going from 0 to 1, y going zero, from 0 to 1, and we plot everywhere an arrow that shows both the magnitude of the velocity, you see there's a small scale here showing that this vector here, a vector of this length represents 2 meters per second, and of course the direction of the vector shows the direction of the flow. So we immediately see a lot of information about the flow here. We see that the velocities are basically zero down in this corner, as we would expect. When x is zero, the u component is zero. When y is zero, the v component is zero. So the velocity is zero here. And we see that up in this corner, both u and v are non-zero. The direction is up pointing in this direction. And the, the velocity magnitude is somewhat bigger than two meters per second. Let's look at another way we could look at that. We could start to plot contour plots of the individual components. So here's the u component, that component of velocity, which is in the x direction. That's plotting the function 2x over my domain here. And here we've colored it by the, the magnitude of that component and that component alone. So you see that when x is equal to 0, the velocity is 0, as you expect it to be. So the u component of the velocity is 0. And when x is equal to 1, we get a value of 2 at this base here. There's also, of course, a v component of this velocity, and we could do similarly, do a contour plot of that v component. And we see here, the function for v is just y. So when y is equal to 0, the velocity is 0. And as we go up to a y value of 1, we'll get a velocity of up 1 at that top surface. We could also calculate the magnitude of the velocity vector, the magnitude just being the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. And we could plot that velocity magnitude. And now we start to see a little more of the richness of that velocity field. Again, though, we see that the magnitude of the velocity is 0 down in this corner, and the magnitude is greater than 2 up in this corner. Let's start to use this velocity field. And let's, let's ask the question, given this velocity field, how do we calculate the mass flow through a given surface? Now, I'm going to choose to calculate the mass flow through this surface here at a value of x equals 1, and the domain that we're looking at here goes from a value of y equals 0 to a value of y equals 1. So we're going to calculate the mass flow through this line here, or this surface, at a face where the value of x is equal to 1. First thing we want to remember is that we need to look at the outward facing normal. So I'm sort of assuming that this square is the domain that I'm talking about. And an outward facing normal then is going to be in this direction here. It will be normal meaning that it's normal to that face, so it has to have a component of 1 uh, in the x direction and 0 in the j direction, and that works out because it has to have a magnitude. The magnitude of this vector has to be 1, and of course the sum of the squares of 1 and 0 will give me a magnitude of 1. So there's my normal vector, and now I want to calculate the flow through that face. So let's begin to do that. Let's remember that our mass flow rate is equal to the density times the area times the velocity. And we're going to need to calculate the velocity which is perpendicular to the surface. And if it's a function over the surface, we're going to have to turn that into an integral. So let's do that. If it's a function and we need to integrate over the surface, we can say that that mass flow rate is equal to the integral over the surface of rho times the component of the velocity which is perpendicular to the face. That's the component of the velocity which carries mass through that face. And we're going to integrate over the surface dA. And remember, the surface that we're looking at is this surface here at a value of x equals 1, going from y equals 0 to y equals 1. Now, because our velocity vector is broken already into a u and v component, and the u component is in the x direction, we know immediately that v dot n is equal to the u component of my velocity vector. And if you want to show that, of course, our normal was 1, 0. So when we take the dot product of that velocity vector, the 1 will give us the u component, and we'll add to it 0 times whatever the y component is, and you'll see that we'll recover u. And so our normal component is u. And now we have to look at dA. What we're going to do is assume that this is unit depth into the screen, and therefore dA is going to be the width of that into the screen, which I've just assumed to be 1, times dy, a differential element of area, 
in the y direction. And with that, I can then say that my mass flow rate is equal to the density I'll say is constant. I've only been given a constant value, so I can pull the density out of my integral. Then I have the integral over the surface of u times dA, which was 1 times dy. And of course, the limits on y are going from 0. The limits on y are going from 0 to 1. So let me write that in there. Integral from 0 to 1 of u dy. I'll sub in my value of u. Move over here where I have a bit of room. m dot then is equal to rho times the integral from 0 to 1 of my u component, which was 2x, the u component of velocity, times 1, which I won't bother writing now, times dy, which of course is very simple to evaluate, rho times 2xy, where my limits of integration were 0 to 1. Now x on this surface, x is a constant value of 1, so I can sub in that value of 1 for x, and this is going to be equal to rho times the 2 times the x, which is a 1, times y, the top limit of integration, which is 1, minus y evaluated at the lower integration limit, which is 0, or it's going to equal to 2 times rho, which is equal to 2 times 1.2. And of course, if we had followed the units through on this, we would see that this is going to work out to give us units of kilograms per second. So that's equal to 2 times 1.2 is 2.4 kilograms per second. And that's the mass flow going through that surface. And in passing, it's worth noting that, of course, we didn't have to go through this exam integration in this case. This was actually a very simple case, but I wanted to go through showing you how to do the integration. If we look at this velocity field, 2xi, when we put the value on this surface of x equal to 1, that velocity is just 2. There is no variation whatsoever, so we don't need to do the integration. The velocity everywhere on the surface is 2. And so we could have gone in there and said the velocity magnitude being 2, we have the density times the area times 2. And the, dent, the area of this surface, of course, is one unit in the y direction times one unit into the screen. So the area is one, and we could have done this directly and gotten the 2.4 kilograms per second. And that's how we calculate the mass flow rate through the surface.